I'm Chris Bryant, CCIE number 12933, and welcome to this combination CCNA, CCNA Voice, and CCNA Wireless Certification Training video, where we're going to review some concepts of VLANs and also take a look at one term that's used a great deal in Cisco textbooks and on the website that I found could be a little bit misleading. It's a good exam tip for you, uh, regardless of which of those three exams you're prepping for, and a little VTP review thrown in here as well. In this particular video, we're working with two switches that are trunking, but of course we're always going to verify that before we get started, and we're going to do that with show interface trunk, and we can see that we actually have two trunk lines between these two switches. Now, first off, I mentioned VTP, and we already have a VTP configuration in today's pod. So what I'm going to do to see what that's all about is show VTP status. This is really the first command I run whenever I've got a question about the way the VTP is set up in a lab or an exam or a production network. You can see this particular device is in VT operating mode server. It's in server mode. We're in the domain name CCNA. You definitely want to watch that because that is case sensitive. And we have six existing VLANs. So it sounds like we have one extra besides our default. And we can check that with show VLAN brief. And this will always show you your default VLANs. And we see there is a VLAN 45 here. As I scroll over a bit, it will show you the interfaces that are in each particular port. As you can see right now, all of the interfaces are in the port, excuse me, the default VLAN, which is VLAN 1. The trunk ports, of course, will not show up here. So before we continue and really take a look at the VTP lab in a couple of different ways to create VLANs, I want to invite you out to my website where we've got some free webinars coming up uh, on Ether channels and on Frame Relay Fundamentals. You can follow that URL or just do a quick search in Google on CCNA webinar and we'll definitely be in the first five matches. We're usually number one and two and of course out to the website where we've got over 275 tutorials waiting for you. But for those of you who want to know why we can't use both of these trunks in this particular configuration or why we wouldn't be using them by default with STP, please come out and sign up for the Ether Channel webinar. You'll definitely enjoy it. Now let's take a look at the mode of the other switch that this device is trunking with, cleverly named switch 2, and we'll run show VTP status. And you can see we're seeing the same number of VLANs, but this one is in client mode. So we've got a couple of limitations there, as we know from our VTP studies, that we cannot create, delete, or modify a VLAN. And it's that modify term that tends to be a little misleading, I found with some of my students, so I want to make sure that you're clear on it as well. We can prove right here on this particular switch that we cannot create a VLAN. And there are two different ways to create a VLAN on a Cisco switch. And one way is just simply to type in the word VLAN and then create the, I'll put the number assignment that you want to give it. And as you can see, immediately we're given a message that we can't uh, configure it, we can't create one when we're in client mode. So how about um, deleting one? Let's, show, let's run show VLAN brief again. And you can see we've got VLAN 45. Again, we've got a um, 24 port switch on this side. And 22 of the ports are showing as in VLAN 1, which is what we expect with the other two trunking. So what if I try to delete VLAN 45 on this side? Let's say I just try no VLAN 45. Well, again, I can't configure it uh, at all, really, when the device is in client mode. So we're going to go back over to switch 1 and take a look at the two different ways to create a VLAN. Now, one way we just saw and that is simply by typing in VLAN and then the number and 23. And you'll notice that not only does that create the VLAN, but it puts you into VLAN configuration mode. Now I'm going to run iOS help here to see all the options available and do not panic. You do not need to know all of these for any of your exams. There are a couple here, actually quite a few that you may never use. But one that's very handy is the name option where you can actually give a VLAN an intuitive name. And that can be anything from just calling it voice to calling it accounting, whatever you need to call it. So we know that we can create a VLAN in that way. We'll verify it by running show VLAN brief. 
and you can see that we do have VLAN 23 now it's just there are no ports in it so let's say that I have a VLAN 32 that I want to put uh, port 2 in the first thing I'm going to do is create and make it an access port because by default these ports are in desi excuse me dynamic desirable mode which means they're actively attempting to trunk and we need to cut that out right away with the switch port mode access command that makes it puts it uh, makes it so it can be in one VLAN and one VLAN only now I'll actually use the switch port access VLAN 32 command and you can see that it says the VLAN doesn't exist but it's creating it so there are two different ways here to create that VLAN and if VTP is running correctly switch 2 should now know about it excuse me it should be switch 2 and as you can see it does know about VLAN 32 there it is now we know that we can't create it we can't delete it and we're not going to be able to modify it either if we even try to go into configuration mode here on the VLAN it's going to tell you on a client that you can't even go into it but one thing you can do that tends to be a little misleading the term modify does not mean you can't put ports into that VLAN because if that were the case uh, we really couldn't have a port or a switch in VTP client mode because we wouldn't be able to put any ports in it but thankfully for us that's not the case as you can see here so we did switch port mode access and then put this into VLAN 32 that's not a problem so just to clear that up I see a little confusion out there on occasion about this point on a VTP client you can't create and you can't delete you can't give it a name and you can't use those other options that we briefly saw over on the VTP server but you can indeed add ports to the VLAN and that is not considered a modification I want to thank you for taking a few minutes out of your day to watch this video plenty of other videos to watch on YouTube and on my main website as well as other video sites out there on the net and also again I invite you to come out for the free CCNA webinars no money no fancy equipment no headset required just 45 minutes of your time and a desire to get certified I'm Chris Bryant CCIE number 12933 and I'll see you at the webinars.